Uh, welcome back to my project. I'm Eric here. Uh, I will continue from the end of the previous video. Uh, this video covers how to encode the JPEG image of ESP32CAM into base64 and decode it in the app to display the real-time image on the smartphone screen. Uh, I wanted to make it possible on iPhone, but this application for iOS is not possible due to Apple's policy. Uh, if you plan a service that connects iOS devices and your hardware, I recommend you to find out about MFI program first. There is no way to develop this kind of service without it. Uh, the source code for both ESP32CAM and Flutter app can be downloaded through the link below. Uh, you need to build it if you want to install this app on your Android phone. I don't share any APK files. Uh, there are pros and cons to using Base64 encoding. Uh, let's see how we can use it for this project. Uh, let's briefly look at Base64 encoding. Because it's encoding, there is a decoding that does the opposite. Uh, in short, it turns byte data into a string with certain rules. Uh, Base64 is a 64-digit representation of data re represented by 64 ASCII codes. Since it only uses uppercase A to Z, lowercase A to Z, number 0 to 9, slash plus, uh, it can be transmitted reliably between systems with different character format that can corrupt data. Uh, it expresses 256 bytes using 64 printable ones. It means it's expressing 8 bits as 6 bits. Uh, for example, 3 8 bits can be expressed as 4 6 bits. Uh, this encoding process increases the size of data. Uh, also, since the data is encoded before sending, the decoding process on the receiving side is absolutely necessary. There are all the bad things here, right? Nevertheless, the reason for encoding base64 is used to prevent loss of the binary data during communication. Uh, it's a good way to ensure the reliability of transmitted data. If there is a problem with the base64 encoded data, the receiver can easily check integrity. Uh, let's look at the overall pipeline here. Uh, after acquiring the JPEG image from the ESP32 CAM, encode it as Base64, and then write serial the encoded data and print a new line to notify the end of the data. Uh, if there is a display model like what I used, drawing a screen with the acquired JPEG image too. Uh, that is all that ESP32 does. Uh, what about the application side? Creating Flutter app, not Android native app. The reason why I make an app with Flutter is that I can make apps for iOS and Android with one code. But unfortunately, uh, we can make it for iOS in this project because Apple strictly prevents hardware correction without MFI authentication. So it's only available for Android in this project. Uh, what we need to do in the app is to decode the data encoded in Base64 that came into the serial, uh, convert it to the original JPEG image and display it on the screen. That's all. Uh, let's see the ESP32 cam first. All source code is going to be simple and very intuitive. If we look through the overall source code, uh, it's not much different from the ESP32 cam source code I used. Uh, Base64 encoding is easy to use. Uh, Arduino code contains Base64. Uh, once you add the Base64 header, you can use the Base64 encoding and decoding immediately. Uh, you don't need to add any other libraries than that. Uh, TTGOT display model is added to the pin header file so that you can select the model I used. Uh, of course, you can use the normal es 3 cam AI Tinker model as well. Uh, the following are the display settings. Uh, in my case, I have a 1.3 inch built-in display so reflect the real-time image here. Uh, if the display is not required, set it to 0. Uh, the serial ball rate is set to 2 Mbps, uh, set it to QVGA resolution for the fast speed. The built-in display has a resolution of 250 pixel by 250 pixels, so this resolution is the best. Encodes the image to base64. A static function named encode is defined in the base64, so passing the buffer and buffer length returns the value of the string. Uh, it very easy to use. Uh, since it's a string, I wrote it to the serial in the same way I showed you in the previous video. Uh, after adding a new line, one data transmission will be completed. Uh, in order to transfer data properly, it takes time for the receiver to flush all the data in the buffer between the data transmissions. 
uh, when uploading to the display, a uh, natural delay occurs because it requires time to write to the display. Otherwise, you need to add proper delays depending on your system. Then I will show you how the actual image data comes in. Uh, on the right side of the screen, you can see the connected TTGO T Camera Plus model. It shows the current image on a built in display in real time. Also, the base U64 string keeps coming in because it is connected by USB to serial. About 72 kilobytes per second are coming in. Uh, since dummy values come in first when serial communication starts, uh, it would be better to ignore the first data. At the bottom of the screen, the base64 string received by the USB to cam is being printed on the console. Uh, also, you can see that the data is transmitted reliably. Uh, the size of the file rarely changes because it keeps sending almost the same image. So let me try to do something. Uh, I'm moving my fingers in front of the camera to get a different image from before in ESP32 cam. Uh, the size of the JPEG image created by this is also changing and the size of the incoming data is also changing. You can check the change of the incoming string length. Uh, currently, one image becomes a one chunk. As I mentioned in the previous video, if you need to send large data, you can set the chunk size that you can send and receive at the maximum and cut it into the chunk unit. Uh, I will check if the image is being sent normally. Uh, I will copy one base64 string printed on the console and paste it into the website that shows base64 as an image. Uh, you can verify that the transfer data is restored to the image properly. Uh, let's see how the flow app works. Uh, in this project, I made this set with two libraries, USB serial and getX. Uh, it's the same as most of the previous projects called my hardware key to operate my app. Uh, if you need an app to be created from scratch, please refer to this video. The basic logic is the same, so I will just look at the part where I received the data and draw it on the screen after decoding base64. Uh, here is the source code for the Flutter app. Uh, there are only two files for this project. Uh, one of them is for layout and the other one is for the controller. I made it as simple as possible. Uh, first, let's look at the serial controller on the right. Uh, since we communicate with ESP32 at 2 Mbps, we set the transmission speed to this. Uh, it also used the basic serial setting of 8 and 1. Uh, to know the end of data, we are using a new line character, so carriage return and line feed are used. Uh, here. Uh, updating the value of the base64 data object when data is received from the connected device. Uh, below is the part where you can find the connected USB devices on Android. Uh, connecting only devices with a specific ID among connected USBs. Uh, this is for CP2104 of TTGOT Camera Plus and below is for FTDI programmer connection of ESP32 Cam. Uh, now let's follow the app in order. Uh, when the app runs, a stylus widget called first is created. The first screen of the app is drawn here. Uh, since the serial controller is created as a controller for get x, it can be initialized in this way. Uh, after that, when the value is updated through the serial controller, this screen is automatically changed to a new value as well. Uh, once the hardware is connected, a button called confirm appears on the screen. Uh, touch this button to go to the next page. Uh, on the second page, uh, the base64 string data must be decoded to the original data, which is a JPEG image. Uh, it's checking if the data I received here is really base64. Uh, if there was a problem when sending and receiving it, uh, you won't be able to pass this part. Uh, after that, it decodes the received data. Uh, finally, you can draw the JPEG image to the screen with image widgets uh, through a pinch zoomed library. The pinch zoom is not a big deal, so you can ignore it if you don't need it. Uh, one thing here is that if you don't set the true option in gap rest playback, uh, you will get the flickers between images, so this option is necessary. Keep in mind. Uh, lastly, the floating action button was added so that the image shown on the screen can be saved as the file. Uh, this is all for Flutter for getting images from ESP32 cam via USB serial. Uh, this project is to wire between ESP32 and Android app to transmit data. 
Uh, you can use wireless communication modules such as Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to send and receive data. But the goal of this project is to use serial communication to transmit as much data as possible at the maximum speed. Uh, it was also an opportunity to use B64 for encoding and decoding, which are commonly used in web or app development and ESP32 environments. Uh, that's it for today's video. Uh, thank you guys. See you in the next project.